the Sony a7R5 might be my next purchase. There are a lot of great features that come with this camera, along with a few quirks. By the way, quick shout out to my good friends over at B&H for sending over the a7R5. The Sony FX3, which is what we're filming on right now, has been my favorite camera of all time since pretty much the day I got it. But this might actually be the first camera to get me away from the FX3. I might do a switch, I don't know. I gotta spend a little bit more time with this, but it's pretty good. I actually have a head-to-head -head video coming up between the FX3 and the A7R5, so if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. All right, now we're on the Sony A7R5, which shoots 8K at 24P only. There's no 30P, thank, thank goodness they chose 24 over 30p. We got 4K up to 60 frames per second. I wish it was 120 frames per second, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Sony claims better image stabilization on this camera than any previous camera before it. They say up to eight stops. We'll test that out in a little bit. We're gonna go outside and do a little vlogging test. It's cold out there, but I do it for you guys. I spoil you. 61 megapixel full frame sensor. The absolute best pull out, flip up, down and around screen that I've ever used in my life and the best autofocus I've ever seen on any camera to date. And that includes the A1, the FX3 and the A7S3, it's fantastic. When the A7S3 was first announced, I didn't think the autofocus could really get too much better than it was then, but it is. We have human AF, of course, we have animal, we have animal slash bird. I thought birds were animals, apparently not. They're they're a complete separate thing on this on this planet. We have insects, just birds, cars, trains, and aeroplanes. And they're both available in both stills and video modes, which is thank you. Appreciate it, Sony. And this might sound pretty dumb, but to me, the best part about having all these new autofocus features and different subjects that you can detect is that you could set them to a custom button. If I had to go into the settings and find which subject I wanted to select, all right, let me go from human to insect now, it would take like two, three minutes just to get through the menu, set it, set it up, get your shot. But now you could set this all to a custom button and once you click that button, it just cycles through all the different modes. So you could literally just do it on the fly. Oh my God, there's an insect. Three times, boom, insect shot, good to go. Also the autofocus is now AI powered, which the whole world is seems to be AI powered now. I mean, this camera isn't gonna write you a movie script or anything like that, but instead of just focusing on the eyes or the face, it can pretty much detect the entire human body. Usually you wanna focus on somebody's face, particularly the eyeball, but what happens if the eyeball isn't visible? What if you're wearing sunglasses or you're tilted to the side or you're wearing a mask or a low hat like Mace used to wear? The AF in this camera will focus on anything that it detects as human. Ears, mouth, chin, shoulders. If they turn around, they turn it back to you. It's gonna grab onto that back, the back of the head. Whatever it is, this camera is gonna do its best to try to keep focus on that subject no matter which way they're facing. The autofocus on this camera truly is as good as it gets right now. Coming from an A7S III and an FX3 and have spent plenty time with the A7 IV and the A1, this, yeah, this is better than all those. Some small things that I like, there's a dedicated photo video switch and s and which s and I don't, I pretty much never use. Maybe I should start, but I never do. Either way, there's a dedicated switch right under the mode dial so you can keep all your settings separate. Also, there's an extra custom dial up top, which I have set to change my Kelvin so I could switch my white balance on the fly. Love that. There's easy ways of doing this on other cameras, but this is my favorite so far. And with the a7R5, we get a lot of Sony's newest features like focus breathing compensation, which still, just like everybody else, I'm not gonna let this go. That feature right there needs to be in the Sony A1, the FX3, and the A7S3. I'm sorry. That shouldn't be a luxury or a selling point on a camera. Some of these lenses have pretty bad focus breathing on it, and that's kind of a flaw. And depending on what type of project you're shooting, if it's a paid project, something for a client, maybe a wedding, professional interview that you get hired for, Th that focus breathing could maybe cause those shots to be unusable. There's a setting in the menu that you could have your shutter closed when you power down your camera to protect your sensor. Love that. It was on the EOS R. It should probably be on Sony's newer expensive cameras. I'd love to see that added as well to other cameras. We also get the new updated menu system with the tiles on the first two pages that we first saw in the Sony FX3 2.0 firmware. Focus mapping is in here too, which is a feature that I've never used and I really don't see myself ever using it. I 
played around with it a little bit doesn't do it for me but whatever and we have af assist in here which is cool too so for some reason if your camera isn't focusing in autofocus on the exact thing that you want it to focus on then you could fine tune that focus point using the focus ring and then after that it'll switch back to continuous autofocus now let's move on to the screen this is the screen design that needs to be on every high-end sony camera moving forward no more debates between video and still shooters the screen pulls out up down and fully articulates i don't see how it can get better in any way shape or form look at this this is what i have to do to keep this needy little dog away from me when i'm filming so that he leaves me alone while i'm trying to film but he's so needy that he just has to stand here and watch me film in hopes to get past this little barrier so he could be right by my ankle isn't that right kobe isn't that right yeah you annoying Oh, now you don't want to look. You camera shy? All right, now let's check out the stabilization. Like I said before, Sony claims up to eight stops. Now, I'm not really sure if that means with active steady shot or without active steady shot turned on. Right now, we have active steady shot turned off, and we're going to be checking out two different lenses. One non-stabilized, which is this, the 20 mil f1.8, and then we have a stabilized 24 to 240. So we'll check both of them out, and we'll see what kind of difference it is. Right now... There's no active steady shot turned on, and this is what you're going to get handheld in a vlogging situation. Let's hold it with my left hand since I'm a southpaw. And on the screen right here, I got to say, looks like it's fairly stable without active steady shot turned on, which is normally not the case with Sony cameras. All right, now let's switch over to active steady shot. We could do that on the fly. Boom. You see the little crop there? And now this is active steady shot with the non-stabilized lens. It's so cold so lonely out here hungry all right now we're on the stabilized 24 to 240 this is without active steady shot turned on is that image stabilization in the lens adding any extra to where we don't have to crop in with the active steady shot still seems pretty shaky to me trying my best here to hold the steady this is a fairly heavy lens i don't think from this flip screen that this stabilized lens is making too much of a difference Let's turn on active steady shot, see what happens. Whoa. And now we should have some pretty stable footage. We have the new image stabilization from Sony in the A7R5. We have active steady shot turned on and we have a stabilized lens. Is this the most stable footage you've ever seen from a Sony vlogger ever in your life? Sony needs to start stabilizing all their upcoming lenses, especially for the prices that they're charging for these G Masters. All G Masters should be stabilized, 100%. All right, now we have steady shot turned off. Let's go from 24 all the way into 240. And let's focus on that last little bench here. Get our exposure right. And this is handheld. Let me stop talking so I could focus on my grip here. Still seems a little jerky, even with the stabilized lens. Now let's turn on active steady shot. And boom. All right, that's almost tripod-esque. All right, so right now my settings are 4K XAVC SI, which is the highest quality 4K you could shoot out of this camera. We're in 24P and we're shooting in S-Log3 S Gamma 3 Cine. And this right here is what it looks like straight out of camera with no color added. And now here's what it looks like color graded using Film Convert Nitrate. Film Convert is available for Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, and After Effects. And they support a huge list of cameras. I mean, a huge list of cameras. And that list is constantly growing. There's a pretty good chance that the camera that you own is supported by Film Convert. And besides professional cameras, they even support things like iPhones, Samsungs, DJI drones, even GoPros. So if you happen to use different cameras to fill in for certain shots of your video, maybe you don't have your camera on you and you got your iPhone or a GoPro or something like that, no problem. You'll be able to slip those clips in, make all the colors match and probably nobody will know the difference. Film Convert offers camera profiles, grain scans, and full control over your film grain. Full control. Highs, mid, shadows, all that. You got beautiful film stocks. You can export 3D LUTs, which is great. If you happen to find the exact look that you're looking for, and you just want to replicate that out of your video, 
find a look, export it as a 3D LUT, and you're good to go. They also have Cineon emulations and full custom curve controls. If you want a real cinematic look and you happen to like Fuji colors or Kodak film colors, but you happen to shoot something like Sony or Canon, it's no problem. Just download your camera's free profile from their website and you're good to go. And you don't have to go with a full on film look. There's a ton of controls and sliders that let you dial in the perfect look that you want. And Film Convert has a risk-free trial that you could test out right now. And if you enter the promo code LAPANI, my last name it's italian you'll get 10 percent off thank you very much film convert for sponsoring this video and for supporting this channel let's get back to this camera now unlike the sony a7s3 and the fx3 this camera has mm, pretty bad rolling shutter i thought after the a7s3 was announced moving forward that sony was going to kind of try to find a way to eliminate rolling shutter but yeah, it's still here. The readout on this camera is just not fast enough for 61 megapixels. So it's just something you're gonna have to deal with if you're aiming for this camera. The rolling shutter and the no 4K 120p are the two things mostly that's holding me back from switching from my FX3 to the A7R5. Now you can shoot 120p on this camera, but it's kind of crippled. I, I didn't expect this when I picked up this camera and looked in the settings. You can shoot 1080p, 120 frames per second, but it's only available in 8-bit. So when the rest of my footage is in 4K 10-bit S-Log3, if I want to shoot 120 frames per second with the A7R5, it's probably going to have to be 8-bit S-Log2. And then I got to worry about matching my clips up, and I don't know, it's just... It doesn't seem appealing to me. I figured if the 1080p, 120 frames per second was still in 10-bit, then I'd be able to just upscale from 1080p to 4K and probably not too many people would know the difference. But now that it's 8-bit on top of that, I just, I don't know. If I wasn't a wedding shooter, I probably wouldn't need 120 frames per second as much, but being that that's a way that I make a good chunk of my living. Yeah, it's kind of a necessity for me. Besides those few things, this camera is amazing. I think that Sony is kind of showing us what the new wave of features and autofocus and all this stuff, the flip screen and everything. I think Sony's kind of giving us that first glimpse into what future cameras are gonna look like. So I think for now, I'm probably gonna hold on to my FX3 because it's just a mind blowing camera still. And then I'm just gonna wait it out and see what comes out with maybe the A7S IV or whatever comes out in between now and then. Hopefully they don't take too long with that A7S IV. First video on the new channel is dropping this upcoming week. I just wanna say thank you guys for going over there and subbing before I even drop my first video. Whoever didn't, if you wanna go check it out, you wanna be a day one or on the new Everything Man channel, I'll leave a link in the description below or you can click right here. For this video, thumbs up, subscribe, click the bell, comment, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you Film Convert for sponsoring today's video. I'll see you guys next time. Salute.